In this series of videos, I'm going to be looking at using one of the new models of Raspberry Pi to see how effective it is for game development as a sort of desktop replacement. Uh, so I'm going to be, to be looking at some programming, but also at 2D art and 3D art and modeling and how the new Raspberry Pi stacks up. So I recently received delivery, I've not even had a chance to run it yet, but here is my new Raspberry Pi computer delivered from Pi And if I open that up, you can see something that looks fairly familiar for anyone that's used a Raspberry Pi in the last few years. Uh, but there are some differences that are worth noting compared to the Model 3 or some of the other slightly older versions. So I'm going to crack open my Raspberry Pi 3 here. So I have my Raspberry Pi 3B. It's got four USB. It's got an HDMI. When we come to the Raspberry Pi version 4, the most obvious difference is the HDMI slot has been replaced by two HDMI connectors. And these are micro HDMI connectors. If we look at the USB slots, two of them are in that familiar blue that indicates it's USB 3. So the high speed standard for USB. So that's a nice step up. So we now have a machine that's capable of running two monitors and have high speed USB connections. One other change of note is the power adapter is now a USB C type power adapter. So that might mean requiring a different connector or a new power supply for your Raspberry Pi if you've already got one. The reason I'm slightly less keen about some of these changes are that it adds an extra price to the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you were to buy a Raspberry Pi 3, when introduced to 4, they kept the price point the same. So about £35 if you're ordering it in the UK. But that's not the total cost because you need other things. You need a power supply, obviously. You need an HDMI cable to connect it to a television. You will need some way, some keyboard or mouse. Oh, the one other thing obviously is a micro USB for the operating system. So I've got a micro USB in here with the operating system installed on a tiny little. So those things, unless you happen to have them all lying around, they will add a few elements of cost there. With the Raspberry Pi 4, with now in my experience and expectation, not many people will be using the Raspberry Pi 4s to run dual monitor displays. On the other hand, very few people also have micro HDMI cables or connectors or adapters. So that's maybe another £5 you're going to have to spend on the Raspberry Pi 4. The it's a little bit more power hungry than the older versions of Raspberry Pi, so you probably will need to get a new power supply. You might have a mobile phone that has a USB-C connector, but it might not deliver enough power to reliably run the new Raspberry Pi 4, so you really should get a new power supply as well. I've got my official Raspberry Pi power supply. I've got, well, I've gone for the official Raspberry Pi case for the Model 4. Um, I quite like the, the official cases, they're quite nice. There's lots of alternatives. Um, some more colourful, some more businessy looking. Uh, but the official one is quite nice and I quite like it. So you start adding in extra costs and it does come above £35. And also you're going to need your memory card. So it does start to add on. The other thing with the Raspberry Pi 4 is it's got a much faster processor, a much more powerful processor, and it runs a bit hotter. And what happens when it runs hot is it throttles its performance and so it actually slows down the output it gets. So you're going to need a heat sink as well to help keep it cool or something like this. This is the Raspberry Pi fan shim and this connects to the GPIO pins in the Raspberry Pi and is a fan cooler, so that will keep it nice and cool. And if you're going to try and use this as a games machine, that's really going to be necessary. We're going to be running software that's going to really be pushing the processor, so we're going to need something here to try and help keep it cool. So that's going to be super essential. Compared to the Raspberry Pi 3, there's a nice increase in power, so it's going to allow us to do a lot more, but 
if I wasn't going for this particular task, I wouldn't actually bother with the Raspberry Pi 4 at all. I would have kept with my Raspberry Pi 3 because I see these things, that these extras of, you know, cooling, active cooling, a different power supply, having to buy in a cable I don't have. You know, so I'm the sort of person I've got, you know, just about every cable that's ever been in a drawer. Uh, but when I ordered on my Raspberry Pi 4, I couldn't start it straight away because I forgot to order the micro USB HDMI cable. So it's an extra cost and a thing that people are unlikely to have lying around the house. So if you're getting started with the Raspberry Pi 3, it'll cost you £35. You will have some of the things you need lying around the house. It will work with a lot of mobile phone power supplies. It will work with a standard HDMI cable. A lot of people have those lying around and you won't need anything else. With the Raspberry Pi 4, you will definitely need the cable. Highly recommended you get the power supply. So when you get all the different bits added on, you're looking at maybe an extra £15 more or possibly as much as £25 more on getting started with the Raspberry Pi 4 than you would spend on a Raspberry Pi 3. So, although the board itself is the same price, however, for running things like game development and 3D creation, you're going to probably want that power. So, I've got myself a Raspberry Pi 4. I've not even got it set up yet. I'll look forward to doing that. And we'll see in future videos how it performs.